But in this video, we're going to talk about uh, the idea and concept of regions. So regions are an important part of a geography class, and we will use the term region a lot in here. So I want to talk about what that term means um, and the kind of the process of what we call regionalization, as well as touch on three of the main types of regions. Um, so the first question is, what is a region? So you look at, um, this is from my AP Human Geography course, but this is um, a, a way in which they have divided the world into different regions. Um, so the term region is defined as an area of Earth defined by one or more distinctive characteristics. So when you think about the category speed that we've talked about, uh, social, political, economic, environmental, or demographic, um, you can think about the types of things that would be characteristics, right? You might be thinking about social characteristics, characteristics things like language or religion. Um, you might be thinking about political characteristics, like the, um, the divide between Western and Eastern Europe kind of signifies um, the divide between formerly communist um, and capitalist countries kind of during the 20th century. Um, you might also be thinking um, about economic differences that exist between different regions. So any of those types of things can go into creating a region. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about what kind of the process of regionaliz uh, regionalization looks like. So why geographers use regions in the study of geography um, is because dividing geographic space into regions is sort of a convenient and an easy way for us to look for commonalities or for similar similarities within a space. Um, so that can be similarities related to culture, politics, um, economic levels is a frequent one to use. But essentially, we're looking for... Um, things that make uh, the study of particular places more, um, more easily accessible, right? So combining places and creating them into a kind of regions to study has kind of that effect. And when you think about like a history class, you know, frequently we divide historic, kind of historical periods um, up within a history class, right? You study um, a particular period. So the geography is the same way, except instead of um, kind of chronological time, we, we use physical space. Um, so we look for comma, commonalities and study commonalities across geographic space. Um, so we use the term region in here. Re we will talk a lot about world regions, right? Um, I will ask frequently for answers in which I'm looking for a region as an answer. So frequently what that means is, you know, usually smaller than, than a continent, but bigger than an individual country. Um, so you can see on the map the only individual country, I guess you see a couple individual countries here, um, Australia and Canada, um, and then part of Russia as well. Uh, but you don't see the names of a lot of individual countries, right? So a region would be something like Western Europe that combines most of the countries within that geographic territory, or Central Africa, or East Asia, right? Those are what we consider to be regions usually. Um, so there's another type of meaning when we talk about the term region. Um, that we'll use and study in here. And there are three different types of regions. Um, so we'll go through and talk about the three different types of regions that we'll uh, kind of study within class. Uh, so the first one is talking about areas that are organized around usually what we call a specific economic activity um, or like a focal point or a node. So the easiest way that I have to describe it kind of the idea of a functional region is if you think of a pizza place that delivers, um, obviously the node or the focal point is like the store, right? So most places that deliver have like a delivery zone that goes around the store um, in which they deliver to. So that would be considered kind of the functional region um, that is is created by the store, right? Uh, so what we're thinking about with functional regions is activity that is centered around a specific kind of like hearth or... or um, node or like a central point usually. Um, so that is the example. On the bottom, I think this is a map of where different NFL games are shown uh, in a particular week. So you can see like the Seahawks game, um, the Seattle market is created by the, by the presence of the, the Seahawks. Um, and then you can see the geographic area that's served by um, kind of the, the activity of showing a Seahawks game on TV. Um, so that is the idea of a functional region. So when you're thinking about functional regions, think about sort of the economic activities uh, that are creating them. All right, the second one is called a perceptual region. Um, so this is an area in which people, that people believe exists uh, or that sort of they create in their head. So when we think about a region, sometimes we will use terms like 
um, the South or the Pacific Northwest. Um, and essentially, um, there is not necessarily a defined South. If you look at this map, you can see some of the things that are considered to be part of the South are actually, you know, above the Mason-Dixon line and, and kind of midway up the country. Some of the, the, the states on the bottom of the United States, places like New Mexico and Arizona, are very infrequently counted as part of the South, right? So these terms have some sort of cult, cultural or social or political meaning um, that is derived from, from your sort of informal sense of place. Um, so the South, the Pacific Northwest, um, the Islamic world sometimes is, is used, even though actually that one is uh, maybe a little bit more of a formal one. Um, but those are kind of the two that oftentimes come up with perceptual regions. So the activity where we did where we created our own South, um, that was an example of a perceptual region. Okay. Um, and the last one is uh, called a formal region. So um, the easiest way to kind of remember the idea of a formal region is that it is sort of everything that the other two are not. <laughs> so it's this kind of big catch-all category um, that's the definition is any area uh, within which everyone shares one or more distinctive characteristics. So the important part of this is there has to be some sort of uniform characteristic. Um, so it can be any sort of political unit, like a state um, or a, a city or a county or an individual country um, or even a continent can be considered a formal region, right? Because there's like a distinctive characteristic, um, basically the fact that it's created by, by a government or that it has, has sort of a similar... Um, uniform characteristic defining it uh, creates a formal region. Uh, you can also do that with things like language and religion and climate um, or economic production, where if you're actually looking at specific pieces of data and creating geographic sort of regions from that, that would be considered a formal region as well. Okay, um, so those are the three main types of regions, formal, functional, and perceptual. Uh, so here we see an example of kind of you could create a formal region out of this. So we have kind of what we would consider to be um, most kind of the, the places in the world that practice Islam. So if you're looking at kind of a, a region and you're thinking, well, what would be sort of an Islamic region of the world that you would create? Um, you can kind of get a sense from the, country, from the countries that are uh, in the darkest category, what types of countries that would be included. Um, and you can see not all of these countries are connected necessarily, but... Um, you can see a little bit of that within the map. So that's interesting and useful. So that would be an example of a formal region. Um, and yeah, this one, again, we see a different version of a functional region where you have the NFL team in the middle um, and then the node that it serves around it. All right, thanks.